going on, YouTube? We're back with y'all, and what are we talking about today? All right, we're going to talk about congregation titles or the hierarchy, because we keep hearing in the comments, people are like, oh, what is, don't know. what's the hierarchy, or how do these things work inside the yeah. congregation? Oh, yeah, a lot of our uh, commenters have, like, people that they know that are Jehovah's Witnesses, so they know, yeah. don't know exactly the in and out, so this video is for y'all. Yep, let's break it down. Our way of doing this, we'll start from the beginning and then we'll go up. Yes. And I guess you don't think about this stuff being inside the hall becomes so normal. Yeah, it's a right? very normal thing to just have the titles and the hierarchy and it's, it's just normal. It feel regular until other people get to ask, what's this mean or what's that? And it's right. like, oh, okay, well, let's, I guess, break it down. Yeah. So starting off is your, um, you may not know this as being the person inside the house but we all know this is number one when you go knock on somebody's door uh -huh. you are preparing them to be what's called a return visit yes that is the very lowest where you're just going back and talk and sharing bible truths with them right and then after you become a return visit you then turn into a book study yep and what's weird about this you may have no clue <laughs> that you are even under these titles you know yeah. it start off you know, you're knocking on the door. Hey, we're talking to a neighbor's blah, 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 blah. And it's like, all right. Then it's, you mind if we come back and get what you thought? And it sound and it's like, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, how about next Saturday? Yeah, that works. And then they leave. And you just thought, you know, some people came and knocked on your door, asked about the Bible. <laughs> Meanwhile, they wrote down your name. Your uh, address. Your address. <laughs> you know, information. You know, did yep. you have kids or... Little details about you so that yep. they remember and make it very personalized. Yeah, and the next thing you know, they come back again, and it's like, Tommy, right? And your son's name is Christopher. Yeah. You think like, man, that was nice of him. No, it was in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah, so then you become a book study, and that's um, where you start getting a little more exposure. So they do exposure very minimal at first. It's like you slowly get exposed to more and more things, and right. usually around that time is whenever you get invited to the Kingdom Hall. Yeah, it goes in that order. Yes, and um, once you start progressing in the book, depending on whatever book or publication you're being exposed to, the goal for every uh, return visit or book study is to eventually go into the uh, What Does the Bible Really Teach book. Right. So that's like the perfect layout book that um, exposes you to the organization and all of its like policies, procedures, their beliefs, everything like that. Yeah, and it's kind of sugar-coated in the beginning. Like, it doesn't go into, once you lock into the contract details, it's just, you know, this is who is God, who is yeah. Jesus, and yeah. little, some of their basic teachings. And then it's like, once you get to where things get more complicated, because you might in the, in the beginning have these questions, and it's like, we'll get to that later. Yeah. And you just get comfortable, get familiar with the witnesses, I think right. you said before in the video, they invite people to come and meet you at your house. This is Brother So-and-So. He's going to sit in on our, our study today yes. and things like that. You're taking new people to the book study with you. So they're slowly being exposed to more and more Jehovah's Witnesses. A lot of times, right. too, they'll try to take somebody who might appeal to you. So, like, if you're a younger yeah, person... True. Yeah, if you're a younger person studying with, like, an older person, then they'll try to bring somebody else that is also around your same age group. Yeah. Or, like, um, I remember I sat on a study and it was another Hispanic lady. So, mm -hmm. um, they try to find something similar that you guys can, like, relate to and introduce you to people yeah. like that that they, they think might be... Um, you might be interested in like pursuing a friendship or something with yep. yeah <laughs> under certain conditions right yeah. so now you you studying the bible and you mm -hmm. come into meetings and at this time you don't have the same knowledge that the average witnesses have and what's weird is you are being treated you know welcome brother and this this and that and you feel like this is the love that you're about to receive once you you know become a part of this organization. Yes. And we'll get into detail later on how the love changes. Yeah, definitely changes eventually. Yeah. Even whenever you're going through the book, like they do expose you to some of the more complicated um, teachings, but same thing. It's kind of minimal. Like they don't try to go too deep into the subject. It's kind of sugar coated over. Like the blood subject is always a really big topic. Yeah. You know that people usually don't understand. And another big topic is usually like um, not believing 
there's like a heaven and hell and everybody who dies will go to heaven yeah. so the whole 144,000 and like living on a paradise earth for the other people that's another big topic yeah. of discussion that's something to get pushed off there's a lot of stuff you realize get you don't learn as soon as you start studying that's like down yeah. the line back in the book stuff yeah like yeah. towards the middle and towards the end of the book actually the um with the bible really teach it's kind of early on with the 144,000 and stuff it's yeah. earlier on in the book well let's but. bring up some of the uh the chapters just to skim through and show people that may not know about what the book even is oh okay yeah right. okay so we pulled it up because i can't remember exactly how the chapters go but just looking at it is making me laugh <laughs> <laughs> because it literally starts off with like good stuff and then yeah anyway go ahead babe all right so we'll pull this up Chapter 1, what is the truth about God? Very simple. Chapter 2, the Bible, a book from God. Chapter 3, and these are pretty long chapters. So by the time you get to chapter 3, what is God's purpose for the earth? Chapter 4, who is Jesus Christ? Then the ransom, God's greatest gift. Where are the dead? Now, by the time you get to these very specific, unique Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. teachings, you six chapters in by this time. Yeah, chapter 6 is where they really go into like you know where the dead are so they literally tell you that they're just dirt and they're all just sleeping you know and that goes against a lot of people's beliefs and their teachings like a lot of people believe that they have their family who are angels that are looking over them you know and i can't right. imagine like having that kind of comfort mm -hmm. and then somebody coming in and telling you no actually they're just sleeping and they don't exist yeah and yeah. everything that you're saying is actually demons and, and the thing is when if somebody else is to tell you something about your beliefs as a jehovah's witness it is so offensive it's demonic but you can go and crush people's lifelong teachings and dreams passed on from their parents and yep. grandparents just that quick and it's okay <laughs> and they just got to deal with it if they don't want to accept it there's something wrong with them yeah yeah it makes no sense so um that but after they tell you like where are the dead the next chapter is literally real hope for your loved ones who have died so that's where they go into the resurrection and yeah. all of that <laughs> it, gets, it gets tricky yes it's not until chapter what is it 13 a godly view of life and that's where they discuss like the blood transfusions and life of an animal and how animals don't come back <laughs> basically <laughs> and how many that had me so crushed <laughs> 13 it takes 13 to get into and you gotta think by this time you chances are already are coming to meetings yeah. and stuff like this like and you've probably at least have had like 26 bible studies because um they usually break these up into at least like two studies where you're right. only studying half the chapter and then yeah yeah i then, forgot about that so another thing that's weird by the time you get to like you said the tricky things like the blood transfusions that witnesses get a lot of backlash for yeah you've been studying for a long time and you think if you didn't trust this person you wouldn't have made it 13 chapters by now. Right, And this exactly. is purposely put toward the end for you to find out. And they condition you from the beginning to, like, make sure you study. Because even with this um, Bible study book, like, they tell you, okay, don't forget to study, you know, this part of the lesson. I'll be back next week, and we'll go over it if you have any questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tricky. You get, and then think about when you study, you get down to... The answer, but it's not necessarily the right answer. It's just yeah. what's the right answer in this book. Like yeah. you, if you don't say what goes along with this paragraph, for instance, it'll say uh, in the paragraph, God allows suffering because they disobeyed Jehovah God and thought that they can rule the world. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Question. Where did Adam and Eve go wrong and why do we suffer? The answer has to be that that you just read. So you can't come up with your own answers and then... You could just put it in your own words. Yeah, in your own words. But it doesn't mean this is what right was right in life. It's what's right with this study with this Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. What's so crazy about the Jehovah's Witness publications is that when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I thought it was so nice and so convenient that we had all these different publications to uh -huh. study off of and to look over and to simplify things and basically you're allowing another person to do the work for you and yeah. you're using their perception of what the bible says as your truth and yep. really like for most people the bible is up to perception it it's going to be 
you can read the same scripture, I can read the same scripture, you can read the same scripture, and we can all gain something different from it. Exactly. So that that's what's so wild about the Jehovah's Witness organization is they have all these hundreds of publications mm -hmm. and you have just given like given your critical thought to them. Like here, you do all of the thinking for me and tell me what this means. And hopefully you got it right because then if you don't have it right, I won't question it anyway because now you got it right this second time. Yeah. And hopefully there's not a third, but you don't think like that. You just go, all right, now it's right. Right. It might be wrong 10 more times, but who knows? Right. The following part, this is where you're not quite in the contract, but you become what's called an unbaptized publisher. So in the beginning, they kind of praise you for being an unbaptized publisher, but to, at the same time, you're not as valuable because you're not baptized. And if you go a long time without getting baptized, you're going to be being looked at sideways like, oh, yeah. what's... What's up with this person's spirituality? They're taking so long. Yeah, you can't really be an <laughs> unbaptized publisher for years. The only time you get a pass is if you're a kid. If right. you're a kid and you're an unbaptized publisher from like, whatever, yeah. 6 to 10 or 6, to, that's all right. But right, eventually, but sometime. Yeah, eventually it's like, okay, time to get baptized. Yeah, so basically unbaptized publisher, you are able to go out and knock on doors and preach to other people. But you didn't get baptized in front of a full audience. Usually your conventions and assemblies, mm -hmm. you get baptized. It's kind of very cult-like. You have to uh, sit up in the front to so thousands of people. And then you stand up. They ask you these questions. They dedicate a whole talk to you. You get, get asked these questions. You got to say yes, pledge in front of everybody. You have to yell it. Like, yep. yes. yes. And everybody's <laughs> clapping for With you. With conviction. <laughs> yeah, you got to mean it. Yeah. Yep. And you get baptized and then you locked in after that. They got, and then you got a whole publisher card and everything. So bringing it to yeah. the unbaptized publisher to baptize, that's kind of what happens. Now you are locked in. Now you are responsible for anything you do wrong. Now you can be counseled. You can be kicked out the congregation. Basically held accountable for um, what you have pledged yourself to. Right. So if you've pledged yourself to be, um, what's it called? To be o obedient to Jehovah, and but really it's the go governing body. You're right. pledging yourself to be obedient to the governing body, then boom, now you're held accountable for anything, any wrongdoings that you do in their eyes. Yep, you're locked into a contract now. Yeah, and yep. for the, those who don't know what a publisher card is, a publisher card is like, it moves with you to like, diff if you move congregations, it moves with you. So you have like a whole file on, they have a whole file on every Jehovah's Witness. Just like a job, basically. Yeah, it's yep. like your resume with them and like different... <laughs> different accolades that you might have gotten while you're in it like say if you're a pioneer or something then that moves along with you to the next congregation yep. you got in trouble your service hours how many hours you average per month yeah everything is in there yep exactly yep. next on our list we got our pioneers so your auxiliary pioneers and your regular pioneers yes no. which we don't know if it has changed since we left but this is how yep. it was when we they might have changed it now with the, um, with the whole time. time thing and everything. Yeah. But the auxiliary pioneers needed less hours. So it was like 30 to 50, depending on what month it was. Yeah, if it was like a campaign, memorials or conventions, things like that. Circuit yeah. overseer coming. They would drop the hours. And then anybody could apply to do the auxiliary pioneer for that month. Yeah. With the special hours, which yeah. was dropped. Yeah, to make it easier. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had your regular pioneers. That's was 70 back then. Yep, 70. And I remember there even used to be special pioneers where it was like 120 <laughs> hours or something a month. That stuff as well. People used to be like anxious to be able to get their hours in every month yeah and i know you don't have to hit exactly the the amount of hours in the month but you need it for the whole special pioneer year or for the whole pioneer year mm. you have to have so many hours i forgot they had their own calendar or something didn't they yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> these titles get ridiculous like they do. you don't even realize during the time of all this like this is not in this bible at all but yeah it becomes the norm so yeah and this is something that both genders are able to do, right? Yes. And in order to even qualify to be able to be a regular pioneer, you have to be in good standing with the congregation for one. So you can't yeah. be going under any kind of like disciplinary action. And um, after your first year of pioneering, you go to pioneer school, which is literally a whole week uh, that is dedicated 
to like all this pioneer information. They have their own special book for pioneers. Yeah. Like this organization is wild. The amount of publications in their like own books that they have to give you. And just like we said in our apostate video, like apostates don't have their own literature. You know, I'll say 95% of them. They don't have their own literature. Mm, that's but true. who does have their own literature? The Jehovah's Witnesses. Like yeah. you should not have this many books from the Bible. And then it becomes not even focused on the Bible because you just put a little Isaiah uh, 313 quotations. And this can apply to this big paragraph this long that has all these man-made teachings in it. Yes, and the scripture can be taken out of context. Like, yeah. oh, that's so crazy. Like, obey your master. Yeah. And it's a whole thing telling you why you should pay your money and go to Bethel yes. and do all this and reach out yeah. and quit your job. Like, It's wild. It's so the pioneers, they go through that whole week of schooling. And I remember my friends who were in it, like they were exhausted that week, but they would all say like, it feels good though. It's a spiritual exhaustion. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Right. It means you drain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, let's be for real. Right. Now, unfortunately on this part, this is what they used to get a little more biased and they leave the sisters sexist. hanging. Yeah. Sexist. And the, the sisters get, they always pretend that the sisters get praised and are looked at as equally, but let's be real. The pioneer, and then we'll get into other ways of pioneering later, is as far as they let the sisters go. Now, the brothers, you are push, push, push. Once you will become a baptized publisher as a brother, especially when you are over, you know, 25 and up, if you just stop there, you look at is less spiritual. It's, yeah. it's no way to become, you know, just a Jehovah's Witness like other churches. You join, become a member, you just show up, you yeah. listen, you sing, yeah. and that's it. But no, here you are pushed to keep going. Next you become what's called a ministerial servant. And this is where you have a little more say-so and authority as, you know, the men. And, you, you know, you give talks during the week, so you have two meetings, your weekly meeting, your Sunday meeting, yep. and, of course, field service. So you get to stand up and give more talks, basically like giving a sermon inside the church if you're not familiar with the Kingdom Hall. Mm -hmm. You may give a talk. Some of them are the quick five-minute ones and on Thursdays. Ones, the 30-minute yep. ones. 30 minutes on Sundays. And then you can even go to other congregations. And, and give your talk. Yeah. yeah. And you become, you know, the servant. You get to take the lead sometimes. You kind of look that as not quite the manager, but the, uh, you know. Assistant manager. Yeah, the assistant manager yeah. or something. Like, you don't have that much pool, but you get, you know, a little more pool. Yes. You even get, what's so wild, I could be a ministerial servant for a year. And I got more say-so and authority than this sister that's been around for 50 years. Or the brother who's been around for 50 years and has no titles. Yep. Yeah. That's true. But sisters have no, like they're not allowed to become ministerial servants or mm -hmm. elders. And they say they just follow the hierarchy that it says in the Bible, like with God being, you know, the leader and then men following God and the mm -hmm. sister is the neck. Like that's how, that's how they word it to make it more easy to digest yeah so it's like just <laughs> but sisters you can also give these quick talks we'll be a three to five minute talk yeah we're sitting down at a table doing the um but then they started allowing men to do those too yeah so that yeah. even made it worse for the sisters because it's like the one thing y'all did have more mm -hmm. control over it's like oh we'll just let everybody do it yeah i think women naturally don't care about having that much control so yeah. most women didn't care about it until you like leave and then you're like that was kind of... Right. Come uh, on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. The hierarchy had a little suspense right here. <laughs> this is the head honchos of the congregation. Who are they, babe? The elders. The elders. Yes. You hear a lot of stories about elders. Yeah. A lot of people's trauma and a lot of people's stories to where they got fed up dealing with people in the congregation. A lot of the times it were the elders. Yeah, and they had bad... Bad taste was some something that the elders did. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess we'll explain the elders are basically, you know how you got a pastor at a church? It's a group of pastors. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, a lot of them aren't really, some of them are very intelligent people. And then you have some that are nobody outside of the kingdom hall, but inside of this building, they, they wear the pants and they get yeah. to tell people what to do. So these people, they appoint, say, if you want to get, you know, become an unbaptized publisher, I got this new study. You got to have a meeting with them, a private one. Mm -hmm. You want to get baptized, you got to go through them. Yep. So many things, you want to become a ministerial servant. The elders pick you and they kind of watch you all the time. They always got eyes on you. Even outside the hall, they watch your social media. 
all type of stuff. And same, even with the elders, like they're, um, same thing. You have to be in like good standing within the congregation. Yep. And I remember like my, uh, Papa is an elder. Mine and too. Even, yeah. And even him, like he was <laughs> not a lot, he didn't. I'm not going to say not allowed, but he did not become an elder until like a couple months after my mom was reinstated. And what's weird about the elders, it it can be favoritism sometimes. Yeah. And at that point, my mom w lived outside of the house. She did not live in the house. Yeah. Like none of that. So why can you not be an elder and have a disfellowshipped daughter? Like, it's just, it's, the elder thing is so tricky and it's so easy for them. They can gang up against another elder yeah. And, and, you know, kind of take his privileges away. Or they can remove other elders. They have meetings. Yes. They have their own book. And what's so wild, you know, the organization in court always claim, you know, we don't have any secrets. But there's certain books, like the Pioneer Book. Nobody it's, it's only knows. For us. Yeah, nobody yeah. knows what's in the Pioneer Book unless you've been a pioneer or you're currently serving as a pioneer. Yep, the nobody Elders kno Book. Yeah, nobody knows what's in the Elders. It's the Elders Manual, actually. Yeah. Nobody knows what's in there unless you've been an elder. And they, they have so much authority that they can take, you know, a, a 14, 15 year old child that's baptized that done something wrong and have this secret meeting with this child, you know, yeah, by underage. themselves. Yeah, they're Under allowed to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so sick because in the, I'm sure people have like horror stories of the oh. elders uh, disciplinary like judicial committees and stuff because it is so creepy. Like they will literally take an underaged girl into this room full the back room we call it or like the blue room yeah. and that's the room that you get disciplined in and it'll be like four three to four elders yeah, three elders three elders yeah three elders and then an underage girl like telling you all of these details about yeah. their first time sleeping with somebody or something like that you yeah. know it's just creepy it's creepy it's creepy to an adult yeah and it's the elders and you know you have some elders that have that are genuine and want to do the right thing but then you have the power trip elders and i yeah. got stories for days i'm gonna say the next story for yes. story time because it's a good one involving elders yeah. so yeah the elders can have favorites and then we left out when you get disciplined if you are one of the elders favorites you could do something and not be repenting and they're just sweeping under the rug. You know, yeah. I think this brother comes off repenting, even though they're supposed to be asking God if you are <laughs> repenting. <laughs> right. And then you have other people that they don't really favor. Or it could be clicky based off of families. Certain yes. families are like more than other families. Oh, we don't like such and such a mother or, or grandparents. Yeah, we're going to disfellowship them. Or we're going to counsel and hound you a lot more because you belong to such and such family. And that's why it always is like the three elder rule. But like, say you're an elder and you have an elder buddy and their kid gets in trouble about yep. something, you're going to treat them a little differently because it's your buddy's child. You right. know what I'm saying? So you're not going to maybe give them as much discipline because of the favoritism thing. And yep. that's literally what shows that it's not inspired by God as they say because at the end of the day it's these men who are deciding That's true. what happens with you it's yep. not God it's, it's them. humans yeah yeah and another thing is even within the elders there is also a hierarchy so <laughs> I don't know all of the titles but I know that there is like a secretary and then there's the coordinator which the coordinator is like the head honcho of the elders yeah so forgot about that. yes basically everything passes through them they they yep. describe it as each one of them getting different roles and different jobs but um that's what it is it's another hierarchy within the elders yeah it gets and this is what well, all we covered was Inside one, the basic congregation titles. Yes. This, this is, is just the hall. hierarchy of the congregation. And it gets many. And it, we can't even name everything else because there's so much more. This is just yes. inside of one building. And then you have, we'll, we'll touch on this one, the circuit overseer. So the circuit overseer is basically like, think of, uh, you got a branch of hotels. And yeah. this person flies in. And checks on this hotel and then they go to this one but they all belong to the same you know company like yes. Hilton or something like that right that's the circuit overseer so from the witness standpoint because there's two ways to look at mm -hmm. it we're coming to get spiritual food like when the Apostle Paul in the Bible would would travel around that's how you're being taught the CEO is here to give us new 
you know, information that he's been learning and to guide us. And this is when everybody do all the kissing up. Oh, my God. I <laughs> hated that it's week. It's the worst. Because it's like, oh, they would text you, like, in your service group. It's so crazy how many little groups there is, like, within the Jehovah's Witness organization. <laughs> like, now that I'm this. talking about it, it's like, man, it just keep it's like divided into so many things. Yeah. So the kingdom hall is divided into service groups. An elder takes um, charge of each service group. Yep. Now, the kingdom halls are divided into circuits. So when you go to assemblies, you're going to assembly with different, it's a circuit assembly. Yep. So it's different kingdom halls that are in that circuit. And then there's districts. <laughs> so it, the districts are a bunch of the circuits within the district. Yep. So when you go to the convention, it's all these different circuits and districts at the convention. Yep. So surrounding cities and states. Ours was Ohio, parts of Ohio, parts of Kentucky, parts of Indiana. Ours was like like Pittsburgh and then parts of uh, West Virginia. But oh, that, interesting. But there, Pittsburgh was so big that like they took parts of Pennsylvania and then I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> yes. It gets it gets crazy. It so, gets crazy. Yeah, CO comes. So that's the big week. Who wants to work with the circuit overseer? So everybody's pushed to then go out to eat with them afterwards. And it's it was like, like a celebrity was coming. Basically, like Jesus coming. It was like a celebrity coming to the Kingdom Hall. Like, oh, make sure to be there for the CO talk. Like, yeah. um, make sure to come out and service this week. The CO is visiting and his wife. Um, there's a schedule that you guys can write down if you guys want to take them for dinner or have them <laughs> post them like at the that. house. Like. It was cringy. Yes, it was. it was very cringy. I was never really interested, to be honest. It, right. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I don't know who this is. I'm not gonna care less. Let's wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. I did. I just didn't care that much about the circuit overseer. And yeah. then, like, once they would leave, we would have talks oh. following like the week that they were there of where we can improve, like whether it be come to like our service hours or whatever yeah. the case may be but they would come in to basically see where it is that we can improve you know and now switching to not the witness viewpoint but the business aspect they coming in to make sure what's what what's going on make sure the business is still going well yeah check out the money yeah. how many people are coming to service each week and this is to make sure y'all got, you know, y'all getting our money. Yes, that's yeah. why they're encouraging you to go out whenever the circuit overseer is there. It's basically yeah. to make the elder body look good. Yeah. Like, oh, yes, my kingdom hall goes out in service a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then the, uh, I believe, I could be mistaken, the circuit overseer has the authority to remove and appoint different elders at the time. So usually I think the elders have to have a meeting together. With the CO. Yeah, to, mm -hmm. to pull things. But the CO can come in and be like, all right, uh, we feel like this brother needs to be removed. And they mm -hmm. just got more say so. And they used yeah. to have district overseers, but they threw that out years back. Mm -hmm. And the district overseer was, I want, I want to say, over the CO's. And I they think can, so too, yeah. And they basically only came, we thought it was something special. Like, oh, the district overseer. But they really come with something is wrong, and with they need, the kingdom hall. Yeah, yeah, they need to they need to make some adjustments, and he come in, he like a big boss. Yeah, yeah. It's wild because when you go and you like when you're an active, really active Jehovah's Witness, and you're visiting other kingdom halls, every kingdom hall has a different vibe. Like not <laughs> Dude. not all the kingdom hall. The first time I went to an inner city kingdom hall, I was like. Whoa! Wait it's a different. This is different. Like yeah. I can get jiggy with this. Yeah, some of the other ones, the rural ones, they could oh be. My God. Which I grew up in a rural one, and yeah. it was just <sighs> different. I it went was to very a very plain. I was in the inner city one, and then switched to one, and then I ended up switching back. Yeah, so yeah it was. Yes, it was different. The jokes are different. Like sometimes the music exceptions are different. Yeah, we're out in service playing R and B. That was not normal. For, yeah. Like, the Keenan Hall that I had grown up <laughs> and that's because they breaking the rules by doing yeah, that yeah like, but not... they, they're more lax to like yeah. a lot of them yeah some of them are are very strict as well but the one that I had went to it was like more young people so it had a like a younger more fun vibe yeah and... oh that's a we're gonna do that on one of our upcoming videos we're gonna, gonna have witness to... vibes because different witnesses you know certain it's kind of clicky like certain people a little more laid back, some are fun, some are weird, some are yeah. awkward. 
Like you know, it's just like regular life, but yep. just condensed into a religion. So you have people from all walks of life, people who are yeah. all different, different personalities, and you just end up vibing with who you vibe with and stuff. But yep. yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. But, but there's like witness stereotypes. That's what we'll talk about yeah. in another video. <laughs> we'll definitely bring yeah. in on that one. But yeah, thank y'all for watching. This is just to break down some of the titles because people kept asking and it's confusing. Yes, and for the most part, we really just went over what is in the Kingdom Hall because there's a whole bunch of other titles yeah. that you can get outside. Like, um, but what is it? Tra uh, need graders and going yep. to Bethel, being Bethelized. Special pioneers and yes. yeah, you got your governing yeah. bodies. It's just yes. different there's branches, yeah. But we'll catch y'all on the next one. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure y'all like, y'all comment, and y'all subscribe. See y'all. See y'all.